Hi everyone, this video is a continuation of the last video. In that video I gave you an overview of Eileen's new releases and in this video we're actually going to put them to use. So I've got a folio journal all made up here with all of these new elements and, and I'm going to show you how to use them. So this is the book binding die that creates this spine where you can attach your pages and then this is the waterfall set. So I've used both of those in this particular journal. So we'll recreate these and I can run you through how they work. So the first die set is the book binding die set and you've got both this book binding um, element that creates a spine and then you've got a handy little label as well. So I'm going to cut this one from craft card and as my machine is slightly off camera I'll just jump ahead um, and come back to you when I've done that. So that's my spine ready to go and you can see it's cut the outline and put all the score lines on for me. And all I need to do is just fold along those score lines, kind of concertina style really. Um, you'll see which, it's, it's quite obvious which are the, are the areas that are going to be the spine and which are the in-between bits because they're kind of wider. Um, and all I need to do is just follow this along doing the same thing. So that's the first one. This will give me five spines to attach pages to. I'm using craft card here which is about 300 GSM so this is really heavy um, and I would have made my life a bit easier if I'd have grabbed a bone folder actually but you don't need to use 300 GSM you can use um, well this is its cardstock's 216 and that works nicely. You want a decent weight because obviously this is going to hold your pages but because you're doubling it up where the spines are you're going to be sticking those together so you're kind of doubling the thickness um, really any decent weight cardstock will do the trick so now I've got all my folds in place I just need to stick the spine areas together so I flipped it over and all I'm going to do is use red line tape and run along one side of each of the spines if that makes sense so there will be five once I'm done. I would recommend using red line tape for this because you, you do need it to be quite sturdy. There we go, so that's my tape on all of them. And it's easy to just flip it over. And I find that if you kind of flatten it out like this for each one, you'll make your life much easier when you get to the end. Because you're kind of forcing it to go the opposite way to to how it naturally falls so um, I do find after each time pop it like this and just make sure they're all sitting nicely and then once these are all stuck together I will have my spine ready to pop into a journal so that's the last one and I can just lay that out make sure they're all it does spring back on itself so it's quite quite hard you could do with um, an extra pair of hands at this point and then what I'm going to do you can see I've got different thicknesses of red line tape here I'm using quite a thick one here because I want to kind of cover as much of the back as possible and you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm running this along the line where each spine is as I say because it keeps curling up on itself this is this is probably the trickiest part actually. There we go. And then this is ready to pop straight into my journal like so. Now I did do a journal earlier and um, I've already stuck it in so I'll just show you how that works. Now this is sized, this does fit perfectly with three spines on the folio journal. Um, Eileen's older die sets you can play around. The good thing with this is that really you can cut it to size to whatever size journal you've got and you can have more than one spine if you want to have a really thick journal. So the next thing we're going to do is add some pages. So I've grabbed this is the die set that came out in chapter one actually. This is the folio page pocket and flowers and this has got the page on it that you can either fold in half and run along um, lining up with those tabs on the die to give you a page like this that you'd be slipping under elastic but obviously we want a page to go on that spine so that's really simple all I need to do is just die cut this now I'm sticking with craft cards so it all ties in together 
and I can just run that through and it's ready to pop in. And if I grab back my journal, I can show you the size is absolutely the same length as that spine. So all I need to do is glue that in. But we're going to do something a bit different. You'll see there that I had pockets and I had a tag in between. So I'm going to quickly die cut another page. And then I will have two that I can stick together to create a pocket. So I'm going to add tape just to two sides of this because one side will be attached to the spine and then the other side will be my top opening. So I'm doing an L shape of tape around the edge and then I can pop the other page directly on top and line it up. And then that's given me a pocket that's open on two sides. So I need to add some adhesive next to the spine itself so that I can add the page to it. Again, I'm using some red line tape just to make sure this is going to be nice and strong. Um, this is probably the hardest bit to show you on camera, actually, because it's um, a bit of a funny angle, especially with the folio journal where it's really long. Um, it's a bit hard to keep the, the journal itself out of the way. So I'm just adding red line tape to either side of that first spine and then I can peel off the backing and slot the page on. Obviously I've gone for craft cards throughout on this one but you can be using any of your nice card stock for this. So all I need to do is work out which is going to be the top so that's my little pocket so you want to make sure you've got it the right way up and then I'm just going to peel back a little bit of the sides because obviously that's going to slot over the spine and then all I need to do is press down and that's really firmly attached because it's got red line tape on either side and then I've got a lovely pocket now to pop a tag in and of course you've got all those tags in this um, waterfall set. So talking of waterfalls we can now add one in as well to this folio journal. So I've cut a piece of card. I find this is easier with the waterfall if you cut a piece of card that's the same width as the waterfall die it does make it easier to line them up um, so they are directly underneath each other. So you've got two dies that create the waterfall in the set and if you cut your piece of card so that it's the same width as that larger waterfall die it really does make it easier to, to line it all up. Um, also if you want to attach a ribbon this is an easier way of doing it. So I've cut this, this is nine centimetres by 13 centimetres. If you're in inches this is three and a half by just over five inches. Um, obviously if you're using this in different journals just measure the, the gap. Obviously the width is going to be the same three and a half inches or nine centimetres and then the length is just going to depend on what journal you're using. Um, now in this set you've got other elements you've got these little slots and you've got your tags so there's a lot in this set but for the waterfall itself we just need these two dies. So this one I'm going to cut these from craft cards. I've cut six and for the folio journal six fit perfectly but obviously if you're using a different size journal you, you'll just have to work out how many you can fit down the length. Um, the width is always going to be the same if you're cutting a piece of card but obviously depending on if you're using like the travel journal which is a bit longer you'll need to work out you can probably fit a few more on. And this other die that you get with it creates a panel to put on the front. So, of course, you could put some photos on here if you wanted to. I'm just going to use some pattern card and I'm going to use different different ones for each. So I'm going to cut from six different patterns and then I can pop those on the front. And to pop these on, I'm just going to use standard double sided tape. You don't need the red line tape for this, it's just, um, you know, an extra mat and layer really. And the easiest way is to turn it upside down and just line it up so you've got kind of an equal border all around. And then I'm going to repeat that for the others, which I've jumped ahead. I'm onto the last one now. And I've just used a selection. This is the new Sizzix um, pattern papers, actually. This is the botanical set. And I've just picked some nice blues and greens. So I'll bring back in that piece of card that we cut initially 
and I'm going to very easily line these up and create my waterfall. Before I do that though, if I bring back in this one I did earlier, you'll see that I've got ribbon because these do want to spring up all the time. So it really helps to sort of tie them in with ribbon. So what I'm going to do is on the back of this piece, I'm going to add a strip of red line tape. And then I've got some tea stained seam binding, which I'm going to use for this. And if I attach this to the back, then I'm going to have a nice ribbon to tie it all down to stop it springing open all the time. So the first thing you need to do is line up the top one like so. So I'm going to use red line tape to go along the top piece there. But before I stick that down, you might have noticed in the one I did earlier, I've got little pockets. So similar to what we did with the pages, I'll create a pocket for the top one just so you can see how to do that if that's something you prefer. I'll only do the top one so you can see um, you don't have to do this step if you'd prefer just a straightforward waterfall. But if you do want to create pockets, it's really simple. Same principle, just cut an extra one. And then I'm just going to add some red line tape around the edges and I will leave the right hand side clear so that I've got somewhere to put my little tag in a little pocket. I'm using quite a thin red line tape here so that it, it maximizes the pocket space. So there's my pocket and then I'm going to use some thicker red line tape just for that top piece. And then once I stick these together, I'll have a pocket on the right hand side where I can tuck a tag or um, a ticket or you know a photo whatever I want to really so I will line this up and just pop it on top and then that means that top one is going to have a little handy pocket at the side so I'm going to start at the top and I'm adding red line tape to that flap and I'll bring in my piece of card again and it couldn't be more simple really to put this together because I've got that card as a guideline if I line this up at the top and I make sure that the edges of that flap are, are sort of straight against the piece of card, then I know I'm not going to go wonky as I, as I work my way down the piece of card. So I'm going to work my way down and all I need to do is butt them up against the one above it. So it's very straightforward. And as I said, for this folio, you can fit six. If you're using any of Eileen's other dies, the, perhaps the travel journal's a bit longer, you'll have to work out. So if I just butt that up against the, the one above it and make sure it's sort of even at the sides, then I'm going to be straight. So I've jumped ahead to the last one. And once I stick this one in, the bottom of it will be pretty much level with the bottom of that piece. There we go. So once I push that down, you'll see it fits just perfectly. And then I can tie my ribbon around to hold it all flat. I would advise doing a bit of ribbon because they do kind of spring up all the time otherwise. Now to attach this to my journal, I'm going to add red line tape because um, this really does want to kind of spring open. So you want to make sure it's well and truly stuck down. There we go. I can bring my, my journal and of course I could put this on the pages. I'm going to put it on this inside sort of flap, but um, it's, it's a lovely, lovely little feature. And then of course I've got the pocket at the top and you get three different size tags in this set. So you're, you're, you've got everything you need really to be creating these um, lovely sort of tags and waterfall elements, little pockets everything you need. So it's a great, this, these two die sets are a great addition to all of Eileen's previous sets really. So there we go. And I'll just show you quickly um, some other things I've created. So in the folio page pocket and flower die set you get those corner pockets. Then in the waterfall cards 
set you get those slots which again for putting tags so there are so many different ways you can configure this and you know if you think of all the all the different journals you might want to make it's great to have all these accessories I'll just quickly explain to you how I created this first journal actually because obviously I've decorated it you can see I've used flowers from the folio page um, set the journal itself I just covered in craft um, card I've just added gesso bit of old cardboard box um, I've distressed it a bit with some texture crackle paste I've pasted um, I've just made it look a bit shabby really and then I've added some pattern papers inside so this is nowhere near finished yet but it's kind of a starting point really and I've got all those different areas and tags to put things on so I think this is going to keep me busy for a, for a while yet before I consider this one finished but I've got all the key elements there all those pockets are ready um, the spine's done so really I'm going to have great fun now finishing this off so I hope this video has given you a good overview. If you've got any questions at all, just leave me a comment here and I'll get back to you. I'll also put details of all the products in the description box as well. So um, if you need the names or where to get them from, all that info will be there. Thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you soon.